Nothing in life is better than good food and making something with your own two hands, and Blue Apron is both of those things combined. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. All ingredients arrive right to your door, guaranteed fresh and ready to cook. It's better than eating fast food, plus it's affordable. Blue Apron is less than $10 per person per meal. Choose from a variety of recipes and get the meals that sound good to you. Like the crispy wild Alaskan pollock and garlic mashed potatoes with roasted broccoli and tartar sauce. Check out this week's menu and get $30 off your first order with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash top 10. So don't wait, that's blueapron.com slash top 10. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Mario Party is probably one of the most hectic game series ever. There's so much that can happen in any one turn, and the only thing you can count on is that there will be a minigame. Nintendo decided to name their top minigames of all time, but hey, we thought we'd decide to take a crack at it ourselves. The ones you see here are only going to be from the 64 era, but just know that if it's on this list and it's not in a compilation, the compilation's wrong. So hey, I'm Nervous Nick for Screw Attack's Top 10 and 64 Mario Party minigames. Number 10. You gotta love a minigame that just crams your body into a tiny tank and then plops you into an arena. Shell Shock from Mario Party 2 is a free-for-all shootout that ends with only one survivor. Depending on the randomly chosen stage, the match could be reduced to the final two in a matter of seconds, or, on our favorite arena, it plays out more like a methodical hunt with lots of cover to hide behind. But there's an added layer of strategy in Shell Shock thanks to the ability to lob shots over cover, so no matter where you go, you're never truly safe. Just like this idiot gorilla over here. I've seen the Planet of the Apes movies, DK. I'm not gonna give you that chance. Number nine. What good is an N64 game if you're not gonna put that analog stick to good use, am I right? I actually used to hate slot car derby from the core of my very being when I was a kid, but in my old man years, I've actually kind of had a change of heart. Obviously, the objective is to complete four laps before anyone else, but the name of the game here is Control. If you push the analog stick too hard around a tight corner, you'll spin out and stop dead in your tracks. And speaking of tracks, everybody is on a different one, so it's almost always hard to say for sure who actually has the lead. Slot car derby's a little tough to control, but once you and your friends slash enemies get the hang of it, it's an intense race. Question though, in what world is this anywhere near 120 miles an hour? Number 8 We all know it, Mario Party 1 is evil. Every now and then, the game decides that it's time to pay a blood sacrifice in the form of... This BS. But it's hilarious. Yeah, having to shred the skin off your hands so you can stand a chance at taking the other guys' money is ridiculously painful and could be used as a method of torture. But if nothing else, it's a bombing experience, right? But hey, at least it's not paddle battle. That one can burn in the fires of hell. Number 7 Mario Party is the ultimate friendship destroyer. Everybody knows this, but that doesn't mean that you can't form some temporary alliances in the 2v2 minigames. One of the better ones is definitely Hand Car Havoc. Lesser minigames have you doing nothing more than mashing the A button as fast as you can and nothing else. And it's true that you do the same thing in Hand Car Havoc in order to power your cart, but you've also got to steer into the turns so that you don't fall off the track. Plus, you and your friend have to do all of this together. Number six. Okay, I'm gonna level with you guys. Bob Sled Run is the exact same thing as Hand Car Havoc, only it's better. Main reason for that being that both teams actually share the same track. You only need to hit the A button for the first couple of seconds before hopping into your very detailed penguin sleds and racing to the finish line. That is, if you can even survive that long. Without both teammates steering together, you'll never round those railless turns, and since you can actually see the other guys ahead of you, this one gets really competitive. But for real though? Why does my sled have an anus? Number five. You can't play Mario Party without some stuff left entirely to chance. And while some people think it's hardcore to play Russian Roulette, that's really just a wussier version of Bowser's Big Blast. All you do is pick a trigger to detonate and pray that you didn't choose the wrong one. Because if you do... <laughs> this game can go so many different ways. Sometimes everybody gets lucky for a while. Other times the first three people blow themselves up right off the bat so player four wins by doing nothing. 
and every time somebody does get murdered, they take a trigger out of the equation so that those still in the game are just slightly more likely to die than they were before. Hey, if you gotta play a chance-based minigame, it might as well be as stressful and hilarious as blowing up a giant Bowser face. Number 4 Imagine Simon Says, only you die if you don't react fast enough. That's what it's like to play Mushroom Mix-Up in Mario Party 1, or Hexagon Heat in Mario Party 2. But which one takes the number 4 spot? Both of them. They're literally just alternate skins of each other. Whichever one you're playing, it's insanely fun because the rules are exactly the same. Toad sits in his little corner, happily controlling your fates, as the four players rush to the colored platform he calls out before certain doom claims their very lives. Oh, and it gets faster every round. I love how everybody always seems to gang up against whoever's last to the platform. Be gone, scrub! But best of all, no time limit. The game gets every bit as insane as your skill does. Number three. <sighs> I've got an unpopular opinion. Bumper balls kinda sucks. Cause like, you knock the first two guys off the island and then what? You got a stalemate. Mario Party 3 fixed that with a better take on the same idea. Bounce and trounce. Not only does the platform crumble apart as the match goes on, but get this, you have a little attack that can actually bump people off the edge. Bounce and trounce is better because 90% of the games don't end in a draw. Also, it's a ton of fun. Number two. I'll put this simply, Snowball Summit is an absolute blast. So get this, all four players build snowballs to knock each other off the top of a mountain so that they fall to their frigid death below. The bigger the snowball, the more force it has on contact. You can push them straight into your friends or if you think you got a shot lined up, roll it across the stage to go for an MLG trick shot. But you've gotta play a little defense while building your snowball too. Even if you have a colossal moon-sized snowball, it can still be broken by a small one. I can only think of a handful of minigames that I would go back to and play over and over and over again just because it was so much fun. Snowball Summit was one of them. And one of the others was... It's number one. When you're trying to figure out which minigame out of 186 on the N64 is better than the rest, you gotta ask yourself which one embodies Mario Party the best. It's gotta be something with randomness, something chaotic, something where the tables can turn in an instant. I've got the perfect one right here. Toadstool Titan from MP3 is everything we love about Mario Party all rolled up into one game. All four players break these blocks in search of a mushroom. Once the mushroom comes out, whoever grabs it first turns huge and tries to kill everybody else by smashing into them. And like so many other great minigames, whoever is left standing is crowned the winner. I could not get enough of this game as a kid. I didn't even play it against the computer for like an hour straight. Maybe not an hour straight, but I, for a long time, okay? The great thing about Mario Party games is that they're full of surprises, chaos, and moments that instantly tip everything in or out of your favor without warning. That's what makes them fun. Toadstool Titan is like everything we love about Mario Party, boiled down to 60 seconds of mayhem. For secret number 11, we're going back to Mario Party 2 for shock, drop, or roll. Cause nothing says fun quite like having all your friends completely at your mercy as you try throwing them into a field of deadly electricity. But if you're not the one pulling the metaphorical strings here, you have the opportunity to be a boss by out-juking the single player. And it feels good when you do. 